No enemies here. No enemies here. No enemies here. No enemies here. You know, before I start this show, let me start with this. You know, I'm a little bit in a pissy mood. It happens to me. It happens to me. And my wife's uh, gone for the weekend. Uh, I, I, I can't have a drink because of things. And uh, what can I tell you? You know what I'm saying? Anyways, you know, we think of, if any keyboard players out there, keyboard players, right? Any keyboard players out there like that like progressive rock music or whatever. I'm talking about rock and roll and, you know, the 50s on type thing, you know? And we think people like Rick Wakeman. Ooh, Rick Wakeman of yes. Look at all those keyboards. That guy is a genius. But once you start deciphering what's going on, not taking away his talent, obviously, is that uh, your hands do this, and you could do this with your hands too. Play another keyboard, right? And you could do this, and you could do this. You know what your hands? So it's the same movement, different keyboards, different programming. Now you're saying the guy, obviously, programming, synthesizers. Whoa, how difficult is that with all those algorithms and, and, and low-pass filters and high-pass filters and VCOs and LFOs? I got a headache just thinking about that. But it's not hard. It's not hard, and you're saying, but then you're 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 ADD, man, or D A A D H D F L Q R S, and uh, how can you figure that out? I don't know. I figured it out. How to put my hands? Yeah, hold on, Gracie. Wait, wait. My dog wants to go out. So, anyways, here's the picture. Boom. Now this is an organ. An instrument. Yes, Gracie. Yep, yeah, we're going to go out. Give me a second. This is an organ, a church organ. Now, the manuals. Manuals are the keyboards themselves. So, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven manuals. Right? Wrong! Eight manuals because the bass pedals are keyboards too. So, that's what he's doing with his foot there. And if you look on top of the bass pedals, one, two, three, four, five, you see six other volume pedals. Six! But how can you control six sounds on, on this one keyboard? But it's not one keyboard, it's eight of them, right? And look on the left and on the right. Those are all, well, we used to call them stops. But the stops are actually at the bottom where you pull and you're opening up a certain... Um, sound going into a certain tube, right? And some of these tubes are so big, the bass tube, that I can fit in one of them. So can you imagine? And this organ is probably built in the 1700s. But anyways, so all those little keys are all different sounds. You press one of them, you get one sound. You press two of them, you get a layer of both sounds. Now you press a thousand of them, because there's gotta be a thousand, you get a thousand different sounds play together on one note, maybe on different keyboards, this and that. It, it's our rock and roll, our, all our virtuosos on keyboards, this and this and that, who like uh, are into synthesis and all that. And I don't even know why I'm saying this. It's because I'm pissed. Um, they, don't, they don't hold a candle to like a guy like Bach or Buxtehude. Buxtehude was a guy Bach used to, used to, um, used to like a lot, right? Um... It's savage. The talent, the techniques that this organ player has, and the organ is probably the most difficult instrument in the world. Why? Look, right? And um, a drummer could make a good organist. Eh? And an organist can make a good drummer. But the organist is going to find that something is missing. Not enough tone. Anyways, let me go walk my dog. That's my rant. All right. That's my rant. Organs. And uh, people who play keyboards today who are like virtuosos and all that. Yeah, virtuoso this.
okay, explaining it will not give you what you're going to see right now. Give me 41 more seconds, and then I'm going to get into the news. <laughs> Okay, enough of that. I'm going to be normal now. Welcome to No Enemies Here, the show, where you get openings like that. Okay, that's all. I, I said I wasn't going to talk about it anymore. I'm not going to talk about it. So look, we got some news from Flying Pig Games. That uh, Armageddon War, the one that was on pre-order uh, January 9th. Well, I think it's shipping. I think it's shipping. Go on their site, check it out. I know Mark sent me an email and it was this and something else uh, happening. And uh, if I could find the email, let me see there. Yeah, uh, it's okay. So, 85 Alone in the Mountains and Armageddon War just arrived. So, they'll be shipping uh, the third printing of uh, Armageddon AMF, AMFS next month. What's AMFS? I don't know. I'm confused. But anyways, look. It's happening. Um, Nam, uh, what did I say again? For God's sake. Uh, 85 and Alone in the Mountains and Armageddon War are shipping. So, people who pledged, you're gonna get it. Worthington Publishing. Gettysburg, a time for heroes. This is the last 72 hours, and it's happening on Kickstarter, if I'm not mistaken. So, this is an innovative Civil War game which further develops the popular system from Chancellorville, Chancellorsville, 1863. So, it's funny, eh? I don't see it said that it's at... Um, what you call it uh, on Kickstarter? Yes, it's live on Kickstarter till March twenty third, till today, and after today, as we say here, away parallel. You know what I'm saying? And that was Worthington Publishing, High Flying Dice Man, Paul Rorba, nice guy, nice guy. Artie and I interviewed him. Super nice guy. Um, he's got two games coming out, Maneuvering to War. And this is a World War II game. It's designed by Paul, and uh, graphics are Bruce Yarian. You get 311 by 17 inch maps, 307, 370 unmounted single-sided counters. If you want it mounted, it's an extra, I don't know, eight bucks or something like that. And who says games are expensive? $31.95. That's two mounted. That's two maps, not mounted maps. Two map sheets and 370 counters. You know what I'm, th I'm saying? That's a... Yeah, that's what's happening. And here's another one. Operation Icarus. The Invasion of Iceland, June 1940. Yeah, and I remember. Was it Germany that invaded? Or well, no, it was England who invaded because Germany was going to and it was a illegal invasion. They didn't have the okay from the Ice Icelanders. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is it. So Paul Rohrbaugh is the, the, the designing genius behind this. Graphics are by Tim Allen. You get two 11 by 17 inch maps, 320 unmounted double-sided counters, and one player aid sheet and the set of rules, obviously. And look at that, $22.95. $22.95. Now what Paul does is he offers 
uh, cards that go with this game. I don't know if you can get mounted um, chits on this, but uh, anyways, check out the uh, High Flying Dice page. And um, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Uh, Paul, Paul. Um, look, I mean, if you want, if you want to explore different subjects and you don't have the cash, you can either go print and play, but there's cash involved because your ink is going to run out. Sure, they'll give you the printer, but they'll charge you five grand for a, a thing of ink, right? And it lasts like three pages. So let Paul pay the ink. Buy his game. You know what I'm saying? 21 bucks, 30 bucks. Ma, come on, give me a break. So that's that for that news. Uh, we have all the gents in the house other than Kilroy and Ricardo, the professor. And uh, yeah, with that said, enjoy the show. with the crux of the show i hope i'm not gonna be too pissy it's one of those things hissy cat ah talking about pissy hissy cat has one video on its bloody batillo solitaire war game this is this is an older game this is uh by it says here somewhere three uh, www three w games and these are designed by mark Seaman. All this on Hissy Cat this week. The man who looks like a vampire, Mark Felton of Mark Felton Productions. One video on its secret Fourth Reich. I checked this out and it's the Newman Circle Plot. Newman! Newman Circle Plot. And uh, I find it quite interesting. Look, nepotism, okay? On my channel, The Fokker Circus, I ask Master Blender, Russ Willett, and he is a Master Blender. I ask him many questions concerning accoutrements of piping, uh, everything that goes with piping. Smoking tobacco, that is. Huh? Check it out. Come on. Make me happy. Subscribe. Huh? Compass Games has Town Hall episode 85, 
with Julian and Master Bill. Combat Board Games 2 videos this week. Unboxing Saigon 75, published by Nuts Publication, and also talking about writing and games and war and war games. Oh my, he says. Combat Board Games this week. For our Polish viewers, Michel Wojnek TV has three videos. One of them is in English, and it's Napoleonic's The Russian Army Review and Unboxing the Hunters, German U-Boats at War, and Seeking Chronicle, Seeker Chronicles, he says. Voynek TV, ladies and gentlemen, check it out. Artie of Hard Wolf Slayer has three videos this week. War Games Unearthed, SPI's The Campaign for North Africa, he got it. Plus, designer slash developer interviewer upcoming OCS games with Anthony Burkett. And chips, chip, chips, chip Salzman. Yeah, it's good. I guess I want some chips. Plus, unboxing Andrew Jackson's battles by strat from Strategy and Tactics issue magazine, issue number three hundred and forty-six. Gimpy of the Gimpy Gamer two videos, Whiskey Charlie three eighteen twenty four charity giveaway plus combat mission final Blitzkrieg gameplay and review on the Gimpy Gamer. Kilroy of Kilroy was here. Four videos, Sanctuary Sunday, Micro Macro, Crime City by Pegasus Spiel, and Rebel Fury by GMT Unboxing and Overview, plus Monty's Gamble, Market Garden, and MMP game. This is an unboxing of an Area Impulse Overview and movie. This guy, uh, he's all kinds, a renaissance man. Plus Kawaguchi's Gamble, Edson's Ridge, and MMP. Unboxing and Area Impulse Introduction. What's going on with this Area Impulse? Huh? I gotta know. I gotta watch it. On Kilroy was here. My favorite Frenchie Freddy, Fred Serval. From Omu Rudens is at Aircon 24, Intro to Wargaming Event Debrief. So this is a con happening, it's got to be happening in England somewhere. Because that's where he is. Or maybe he travels. Omu Lidens, ladies and gentlemen. Assault Games. Sitrep, March 2024. And uh, we love Hex Encounter Games. Check out Assault Games, ladies and gentlemen, and subscribe. Planta Gene on the Italian channel that is winter quartering, but it's in English. So Somerset's return. Okay, he, he, he plays Planta Gene playthrough. Again, in English. Check it out. Sounds great to me. Pushing Cardboard. Three videos. A news update for March 18th. Plus, Pushing Cardboard podcast number 29. And Hood Strikes North, an unboxing. Love that cover. Love it. Love it. On Simple History, two videos. The most humiliating military defeats. Plus, things they don't teach you about the Korean War. Yeah. Yep. Doug Weed of the Gamer's Closet. Scrabble scoring anagrams. Review and how to play. You don't want to play those games? Doug will show you how to play them. He'll play them for you. Check out Gamer's Closet. Juste Garde, one video, and now it's inside C3i Magazine number 37, and that is the current one. Gaming Through History, Battle of Five Armies, Iron Crown Enterprise, checks out a Tolkien the hobbit game and it's the battle of five armies and eh, i think it was the orcs the elves the men the dwarves and uh something's missing here the animals i don't know i forget but it's been a while i haven't uh, i haven't read the hobbit and the thing is i saw the movie peter jackson's movie and ah oh, god why make it uh that silly but anyways check out Gaming Through History. 
Tony of Tony's Board Life plays the Lost Valley, Siege of Dien Bien Phu, turn 5 to 7 on Tony's Board Life. Mo of Mo's Game Table checks out War Diary issue number 25, a digital preview. Number 25, huh? Wow. Good for War Diary. Box of Delights does part 7 until the finale of Halls of Hegra on Box of Delights. The name of the game. One video. How to play Command and Colors Ancients. Conan at the Battle of Shamia Pass. Really? Alright. Smart War Games has four videos and Razor Sheep Teeth co-op with Miguel Arma. Three custom missions. Or I should say with Miguel. Arma three custom missions. Right? And then Baphomet the Forsaken. Carl versus Hell. Again, Arma three custom missions. And then Remember No Russia. Co-op with Cheese, number four. And Triple Wolfpack. Co-op with Cheese and Miguel, number one. Smart War Games. Check it out. 8,000 subscribers. My Own Worst Enemy. Two videos. The U.S. Civil War. Turn 2, Part 1. Plus, Pirates. An unboxing. Pirates. You heard it right? And you're reading it confusingly. But that's probably me. Yeah? Yeah. I think it's a pirate, but it's pirates. Maybe it's Old English. Dave of Dave's Gaming Cave. Two videos. Panzer North Africa Scenario 63. A solo. Turns one and two. And looks at Compass Games. Storm of Steel. An unboxing on Dave's Gaming Cave. Prasutagus, the Orwell War Gamer, has three videos. And it's his two millimeter Travel Battle First Manassas Project Confederate Showcase. Those are tiny. Jeez. Anyways, TS Games, Westerplatz, 1939, an unboxing, and new arrivals and updates on Prasutagus or Prasutagus, the Orwell Gamer. Cody of the Discrimin Gamer is shellacking us with lots of videos. I would say six videos because two of them are last week's. So he does Cody's Top 10 Area Control Slash Area Majority Games, March 2024. And then he plays Tiny Epic Defenders with Ray. Then he does a Star Trek Away Missions. Again, Away Missions, but the first one was uh, Captain Kirk. This one is Scotty. Commander Scotty, plus Legendary Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Las Navas de Tolosa, 1212, that's the year it happened, on The Discriminating Gamer. Storm of Steel Wargaming, two videos, a bench report, plus painting La Belle Alliance. For the third Wednesday in March 2024, Seek Out and Play presents another in the series of Upfront Rules tutorials. This one is focused on weapons malfunctions and acquisitions. The video covers how the weapon malfunction rules work, when weapons become abandoned, and how opposing soldiers can retrieve them. For fans of Upfront, the video is designed to help explain a section of the rules that comes up for occasional use. As the situation is relatively rare, but it does happen often enough that it pays to understand the rules. Check out more videos on Upfront when you visit the Seek Out and Play YouTube channel. Also, I have an X and Facebook page which delivers news about the channel, along with a monthly podcast which you can find on Spotify and BuzzFeed. And if you want to support my efforts in maintaining the channel, I have a Patreon page for monthly donations, or you can buy me a beer for a one-time donation. Check out more videos on the Seek Out and Play YouTube channel, and I will see you next Wednesday.
most games I play um, solo, there's a nostalgic element to it, you know? And um, this one here by Victory Point Games, Zulu's on the Rampart, the Battle of Rourke's Drift, is um, second edition. Joseph Miranda comes in a like a pizza style box, you know what I'm saying? And um, it was a lot of fun. And the nostalgic thing for me is, is this is the first video I saw Stuka Joe do. And um, I was intrigued by, I think he had a camera on his glasses or something. So, you know, he's, he's always looking down at the, uh, at the game itself, unlike this here. So anyways, that, that that's a nice memory for me because Stuka Joe got everything that I'm doing started. You know what I'm saying? So, came in a pizza box. You get a lot of little counters like this. More, well, kind of chits. This, these are the, 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 the heavy cardboard chits, like the, the pressed cardboard that resembles wood. You know, and those are the the chits that you play with. State of Siege game, lots of fun. You get your basic cards that tell you what to do. A little bit of let's see if I can get through. Yeah, a little bit of uh, historical content here which is always cool because I never knew I didn't even know what works drift was you know what I'm saying then you have advanced cards you know I like this game a lot of fun you get four dice with this like this four like that you get a small rule book with a chart in the back telling you what everything does. The rule book is 36 pages big, but it's a small book. You know what I'm saying? So it's not that difficult. I hope I played this game right. I watched Joe play it. And sometimes the terms that they, that they use in the book and Joe um, read them out. It's like le tableau. Some of these cards go on your tableau. Not your tableau. For a guy like me, you gotta make it a little bit more simple. A tableau for me is a... It could be a painting, a tableau. It could be a... Uh, a small table where you put stuff. And I'm assuming it was that, and it is. And anyways, that, that threw me for a loop. I just wish they would say, put the cards next to you, you know, under the map. I mean, when it's on the table, you know what I'm saying? So you get two maps with this. You get a puzzle type map, which, let me see here. Let me see. You get four pieces and they go together kind of like this. You know, the other two pieces go together, gabish, right? So you get that. And you get uh, the, you know, Victory Point Games. Alan Emmerich had a sense of humor. The wipes a lot napkin. And it says here, uh, use this wipes a lot to remove any residual soot from your counters because they were burnt by laser. They were cut out by laser. And it says, do not use this as a flotation device. So, fun. And, hold on a sec. And you get your paper map. Right, you get a little bit of advertising here. Front and in the back. And Victory Point Games by Alan Emmerich is no more. Right? That's what you get. That's the map, the paper map, and like I said, you also get a board map that you put together. All in all, I had a great time playing this game. I'll still play it once in a while. 
like if I go see my my in-laws in Nova Scotia type thing. So I bring this and you know, I have a lot of fun. So, ladies and gentlemen, Zulus on their rampart is my game this week. Okay, it's an older game. You can probably get it uh, on the second-hand market. But I don't know how expensive they are. Because now everything is so expensive. It's not even funny. You know what I'm saying? I mean, for God's sakes. When I found out. When I found out. That a pound of bacon. Is 300 and something grams. I flipped out. So they market a pound. They market a pound of bacon. Let's get a pound of bacon, honey. And it's only 300 and something grams. Well, for all you people who don't know the metric system, 454 grams is one pound. You know what I'm saying? Not 300 and something. And also, no, don't get me started. Also, the Kraft cheese singles, because sometimes you want to eat crap. And I mean, seriously, that's crap. But you want to have a grilled cheese sandwich. And you know what? Grilled cheese sandwiches traditionally are made with that processed cheese, right? The single slices. When you buy those single slices, you ain't getting 24 slices anymore. You're getting 22. I know one person out there saying, what the hell's Dan talking about? The single slices come in 24. Yeah? Why don't you check the package? Wait, what? This week on 6 Actual, we look at Storm of Steel from Compass Games. Command your Stuka squadron from the opening day of Barbarossa to the final days of the Battle of Kursk. Avoid enemy fighters and flak to deliver your payload. World War II tactical air-to-ground combat, only on Six Actual. Six Actual. The Boss! Clark Commando 1983. Look at that face. Three videos. World War One Deep Dive Der Weltkrieg Part Number 8. Also, GMT Games Unconditional Surrender, Learn to Play After Action Report, One of a Kind Intro, he says. I have to check it out. This is an After Action Report, obviously. And Unconditional Surrender, this is a uh, uh, Salvasta game. And here we go. Some books I have Civil War, World War I, etc. On the Boss's Channel, Clark Commando, 1983. Legendary Tactics has three videos. 2011, the best year in board games, my top 10. And 2015 and 2019, the best years in board games, our top 10. Plus top 10 most unique board games, mechanism and games in 2024. Holy moly, it's a time travel. Respect. Jim Ozarkski, three videos, the Battle of Vimeiro. Oh, Vimeiro, Vimeiro. It's, it's, it makes a difference. For General D'Armé, too. And also, Action at Galamash. For I Ain't Been Shot, Mom. And Firebase for Charlie Don't Surf. On Jim Ozarkski's channel. The Board Game Chronicles. One video, it's Levin Campaign, Planta Gene. Teach and play. Ah, this is a game designed by Francisco Gradil or Gadra Gradaile Gradaile. Sorry, Francesco, if I massacrato your name. On the board game chronicles, history hustle talks about Croatia during the First World War. It's funny we don't hear much about that Bulgaria, Croatia. Uh, uh, I was going to say Turkey, but it's the Ottomans. You know what I'm talking I'm out. It's over then. Well, what can I say? Check out Croatia during the First World War on History Hustle. That fantastic channel that is Kings and Generals. Two videos. The Gurkhas, fiercest soldiers in modern history. Also, how Korea defended against the Mongols. Medieval history on Kings and Generals. The Professor Ricardo Mazzini is with Enrico Acerbi, top right. And um, also uh, Pier Gennaro Federico and Marco Gnanetti. Gnanetti. 
I'm sorry, I don't know the other two gentlemen. I just know Enrico and I know Ricardo. Check it out on Ricardo Massini's channel, An Evening with these three gentlemen. Heavy Cardboard, two videos. Weimar, the fight for democracy. Four people teach and play through and round table discussion. Also, Twilight Struggle, two people teach, play through and round table discussion on Heavy Cardboard this week. We don't have much sometimes on Heavy Cardboard because he doesn't do uh, uh, war games. He does uh, Euro type games, but he's a war gamer, the guy. He, he knows what's going on. Agility Snips, Gaming Table, four videos, Skies Above Britain, Chapter 1, Patrol Number 3, Silent War and IGN, Second Edition, Playthrough, Part Number 7, Jerry White's Atlantic Chase, British Solo Playthrough, Part Number one, uh, number 5, I think Jerry's amazing, and Skies Above Britain, Chapter Number 1, Patrol Number 4, again, Jeremy White. Wait. What? Cutesy Pootsy Zilla Blitz. One video this week. What the hell's going on? Must be busy. Battles of North Africa 1941 gameplay first look by War Game Design Studio. It's a video game. Check it out on Zilla Blitz. Stephen Dolges has two videos of the same content material. Axis Empires Ultimate Edition. Training Scenario, Barbarossa Part 1, and Axis Empires Ultimate Edition. See, I told you. Training Scenario, Barbarossa Part 2, on Stephen Dolges. ID Jester. More than four videos, but I've put four videos on. So he does Aeons and Mission with Phoenix Knight on Tabletop Simulator, and then Deliverance Board Game Setup. Deliverance? Like the la -da 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 -da. It says deliverance board game setup and playthrough solo with two angels, Michael. You know what? I just thought about it. If they would make a deliverance game, like the the movie, that'd be gross. And then we go on inside pitch baseball, San Diego Padres versus St. Louis Cardinals box score. April 3, 2011. Then he looks at Last Epoch, Level 64, Necromancer, Running Endgame Missions on ID Jester. Indy Nidal's fantastic channel, World War II coming to an end soon next month's over. Actually in May. Actually in August. Anyways. Two videos, Week 290, Smiling Albert Kesselring takes command. And the Nazi spies in New York. Huh? Did you know that? Of course you knew that. Matt White War Games, the war game artist, has two videos and it's Memoir 44 Terrain Pack. Unboxing an initial uh, uh, impression, plus overview of his new war game and the second tanks game in Until the Bitter End. Matt White War Games, maybe I'll buzz him up and we'll talk about this game, you know? Short, quick little interview. I'll see. The Hugh Hefner of War Games. Warty Road plays World War II. Four videos. Advanced Squad Leader Starter Kit. Taking San Stefano, turn number one, a recap. Then ASLSK, taking San Stefano, turn two. Again, it's a recap. And new. ACW American Civil War and World War I books plus going back to ASLSK taking San Stefano finale after action report on the Hugh Hefner of War Games, Todd of War, uh, Warty Road plays World War II. Too many W's in there. Hexton counters four videos this week. Player of the Game Golf, Downey Games play example plus The Hunter's Career playthrough part three. And Storm of Steel, JU87 Stuka, Eastern Front by Compass Games. First look. And Headquarters, World War II gameplay example beyond the demo on Hexed Encountered. 
The chief of bonding with board games. One video in its army medic actually plays. He is an army medic, or was an army medic. Twilight 2000 Solo RPG Orphans. Number nine, Sniper by Free League Games, not Dungeons and Dragons. On bonding with board games and RPGs. The Players Aid, the gentlemen of the Players Aid have three videos. Overview onto Richmond 2 by MMP, and they review ancient civilizations of the Middle East by GMT, and they give us top 10 war games of 2023 on the gentlemen of the Players Aid. Charles Latora, look at him over there. Huh? Charles Latora, four videos painting old table green, orcs and tents, prime, beautiful sun, sky and yard, happy St. Paddy's, he says. Storm over Jerusalem, MMP, and turn seven, Roman victory, Temple Mount, and Herod's, I don't know what, Orc and Pup Tent, Shelter Painted, and Shelves 20 and 21, Aircraft War Games of World War II. On Charles Latour's channel. Hex to Hex, two videos. ASL, starter kit number one, scenario, NEV1, turn two, and finale of NEV1 on Hex the Hex. The man famously known as Callendale, Enrico Viglino, is still playing Deutsch Africa Corps. Three videos, the 40, uh, uh, DAC 41, I should say, June, July, and August. DAC standing, uh, standing for meaning Deutsche Afrika Corps. That's what I'm trying to say. What a day. Anyways. Timothy Phelps. Two videos. Commanding Colors. Epic Napoleonic. An unboxing. Plus Lord of the Rings. Living Card Game. Intruders in Chatwig. This is his fourth attempt. And how the first tanks conquered the trenches on the Tank Museum. Howdy folks, I'm Andrew Mike in the Man Cave of Menace. This is my weekly channel update. As you can see up there, three videos for the week. My last week's channel update. And then two new videos, an unboxing. This is The Fate of All from Thin Red Line Games. Yes, they have expanded from Third World War, Cold War Gone Hot, into Ancients. This is an operational game with a tactical combat resolution system. So if you're into Alexander the Great, fight against the Persian Empire, this may be the game for you. Check that out. And then I've continued on with my American Revolutionary War in the Western Frontier. Uh, this is the Battle of St. Louis from the Historical Game Company. Uh, I do a how to play and do the first three turns of a playthrough. I will continue the playthrough that will be finished up for next week. So that's my videos for this week. Do note that I have the game giveaway on my channel. It will be uh, resolved and given out this weekend. So if you're seeing this, uh, Friday night, Saturday, this weekend. Uh, I'll probably close it late Saturday night or sometime Sunday. So if you want to win a game, there's a war game category and a board game category. There'll be one winner in each. There's three uh, choices in each category. So if you're interested in winning something, there'll be two winners. Go check that out. So if you're watching this on Dan Pincali's show, no news here. Hello, everyone. And I'm sending it back to you, Dan. Take care, all. And ciao. Another week, another show. <clears throat> Thank you very much for watching this. Please like and subscribe and support this channel. Wow, what a week. Uh, I'm, uh, I just started working as a janitor. And, uh, you know, all the stereotypes we have of janitors and what we think of janitors, whatever, whatever. But, you know, hey... 
There's nothing wrong with being a janitor. I actually like it. It's my pace. Uh, my boss are, is not there. They just tell me, Dan, you're going in tomorrow from 1 to 7 at this place. And that's it. So, um... I'll probably be playing more games at work because that's how much time I have, free time. And I was playing Worthington Publishing's uh, book game, uh, Bismarck. And um, also, I played Waterloo and I'm going to be playing Gettysburg, by, all by the same company, uh, Worthington Publishing. And... Um, there's a redundancy in the game, but you know what? It's a fun game. It passes the time pleasantly. It's in a book. Like, I have my iPad, and I use my dice there on my iPad, and I got my uh, Stadler uh, drafting pencil, you know, where it always keeps it sharp with my the, 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 the lead, that is. It's fun, man. And uh, I don't know if I should bring more involved games, like games with more pieces, but I'll see. You know what I mean? Because, like, if some truck driver comes in and pukes all over the floor, I got to clean it up. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. And hasn't happened yet, but I'm going to have that. I'm going to have Tales of, tr of the Truck Stop or Truck Stop Tales. Yeah, because I already have one. You know what? Let me tell you, all right? I didn't do an opening or music for this, but let me tell you. So I'm being trained by this guy. This is a co-worker. You understand this? As a janitor, as, as, as a superintendent, as a, a keeper of the place. And um, he's training me, so he's saying, this garbage has got to go over there, and this mop's got to need, need to be passed here, and you got to take care, clean the windows and all that. Yeah, no problem. So we go outside, and he shows me the five garbage cans that got to take care of outside, okay? Tales from the truck stop, or truck stop tales. That's what I'm going to call it, and I will have a segment because I invite people like this. I don't know, my face. My face says, hey, Dan, look at what I'm going to do. <clears throat> Anyways, this guy's, you know, he's training me, and I know he's not well. You know why? Because I work in psychiatry for 20 years. So I know this guy's like, I think he's schizoaffective, you know? But anyways, you can't diagnose someone just like that. But anyways, uh, whatever. So he's showing me, uh, they take out this garbage, and all of a sudden, <laughs> he drops his garbage bags, unzips his pants, outside, in front of everybody, all the truckers, and decides to pee on the side of Tim Hortons. This is a co-worker, not a client or a, a stupid person outside, a people. You know what I mean? This is what happened my first day. What can I tell you? May my eyeballs come flying out of my head if I'm even exaggerating a little bit. I'm telling you, that's what he did. And what did I do? Nothing. And what am I going to do? Nothing. With that note, be nice. Have a great weekend.